The key is this. One of the things to me that is so embarrassing for our medical profession <clears throat> is, as you see on this next slide, how long have we in the United States know, have known that half the planet Earth doesn't seem to have the leading killer of women and men in Western civilization, cardiovascular disease, All right? And we've had American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, our professional organizations, and they've published, what? Tens of thousands of papers over the last 80 years. And 80 years ago, what was emerging as the number one killer of women and men in Western civilization? Cardiovascular disease. Now, 80 years later, 10,000 papers later, a lot of different drugs later, a lot of different procedures, stents, bypasses, what is now still the number one killer? We can do a lot better. I got here in time to hear Colin Campbell, and Colin and I have been close friends really for over 30 years. And it was interesting how, uh, how common this pathway seems to be of pushing nutrition off to the side. It doesn't seem to be glamorous. It's not like doing a bypass operation or something like a me mechanical, like a stent. But what we've really got to begin to pay attention to, not just for cardiovascular disease, but for really for the host of a special autoimmune disease, chronic disease, we've got to start treating the cause. Now, <clears throat> I always like this. This is the oldest slide in my presentation. And it was taken in June of 1968. When I was leaving Vietnam, I had spent a year there as a combat surgeon. And the reason... <clears throat> The reason I show this slide <clears throat> is I think it's so important to let you know that our data from Korea, when we autopsy battle casualties in Korea, at an average age of 20 years, 80% of those GIs already had gross evidence of coronary artery disease you could see without a microscope, but not enough. Not enough yet for their cardiac events, but their the foothold of this disease is established. So that same study is then repeated, this time 45 years later. Now we're looking at young women, young men, who have died of accidents, homicides, and suicides. And now the disease is ubiquitous. Everybody. You go through high school in this country and you get a diploma. And you also get the foundation for coronary artery heart disease. Not a good plan. Now, I can't see with those lights, but I'm just gonna guess that there, how many of you in this audience are over the age of 17? <laughs> you see, I mention that because I find I always get really worked up and excited when I'm speaking with patients. <laughs> All right. Here was when we had a chance to absolutely get it right. World War II, the Axis powers of Germany overran the low countries of Holland and Belgium. They occupied Denmark and Norway. And characteristically, they took away their livestock for their troops, their cattle, their sheep, their goats, their pigs, their chickens, their turkeys, gone. Suddenly, these Western European nations were now plant-based. And in 1951, reporting in England's leading medical journal, The Lancet, Drs. Strom and Janssen looked at the data from this time period, and lo and behold, I think you can see if we work together, <clears throat> starting here on the left, 
<clears throat> you can see in 1927, heart attack deaths, stroke deaths in Norway going up. 1930, going up. 35, going up. 1939, in come the Germans. Whoop! 1940, whoop! 41. Who knew these Germans were these great public health educators? <clears throat> But look what happens in 1945. The death of Adolf Hitler, the cessation of hostilities in the European theater. Immediately back comes the dairy, back comes the meat, back come the strokes, and back come the heart attacks. But sadly, we just did not get it right. Now, Those of you who are looking on the right are going to say, this is a pretty diseased artery. And you're probably thinking that when that closes, there'll be a heart attack. Well, interestingly enough, probably not. Why? Because that is an old, old plaque. It has taken years for this to fill up with cholesterol and calcium and muscle and inflammation. And as that has occurred, the downstream heart muscle has been significantly deprived of oxygen and nutrients. And so the body will often build in its own bypass. We call those collaterals, which will develop around the outside of the artery. Here you can't see them. But those collaterals supply enough blood to the downstream heart muscle so that even when this closes off, you, those collaterals will sustain the downstream heart muscle viability. And what I want you to notice on the other side, even those of you in the back can see that tiny little dark line, the innermost lining of the artery the endothelium. There are two words that I want you to carry home today from this presentation, and that's the first one. Endothelium. All experts in this disease would agree that where this disease has its inception, its onset, its beginning, is when we progressively injure the life jacket and the guardian of our blood vessels, which happens to be that delicate uh, innermost lining. <clears throat> 